You're watching ICIT Digital Media Right Now TV Laporte County. Comcast Cable Channel 99, which broadcasts Mondays at 4 and Thursdays at 6. I'm your host today, Sergeant Anthony Edward Lewis, United States Marine Corps and United States Army retired. I'm a resident and work here in Michigan City. I'm a part of this production because I believe in its mission, which is to reach the community. We are privileged and honored to have with us my friend and a staple in our community, Mr. Michael Mack. Um, Thank you. There is a program that we usually follow, a script, a routine, uh, that it involves starting with prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would, while you're comfortable at home, please stand with us as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may now take your seats. I say that because that's usually the routine that I followed in the military. <laughs> you may not take your seats. Old habits hard to break. It is. That's really what it is. <laughs> um, I'm not a ordained minister, but I have led here in the U.S. and overseas when I was deployed prayer services. So I feel entitled. Is that really the best word? I feel empowered. Empowered to lead us all in prayer. If you have a mind and it's in your heart, please join me in praying to the Holy Father. Dear God in heaven, we ask that you enter in right now and join us. We ask for your fellowship, your provision, your continued protection, your providence with this cause and this mission to reach the community to help us in our quest to save a dying world. Good God in heaven. We're not worthy, but we know that through you all things are possible. And where two or three of us are gathered together, there are you in the midst. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray for the sick and shut in. We pray for our troops overseas. We pray for our political leaders that they will hear your voice and do a much better job of helping us all get the most good for the most people for the longest amount of time. Dear God in heaven, we earnestly and fervently pray to you right now, right now, that you will show up and show out, surprise us with the wondrous glory that we know is only possible through you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <clears throat> Ooh, I feel sweaty. <laughs> um, the um, program that we usually follow usually begins with mention and a word of thanks to our many sponsors. This program wouldn't be possible without the financial support and the moral support of local businesses and individuals. It is all together fitting that we make sure that some of the limelight shines on them because this is your community. You have every right and you're entitled to know as much as you want to know, could possibly want to know what's going on in your community. The companies that you patronize, they're doing more than just providing services. They're helping this program and helping us all in a variety of ways. So we want to shout out to them and we want to lift them up. One of those organizations is Chipotle. Who doesn't like really good Mexican food? Chipotle, besides the fact that they are a great sponsor, they're also hiring. So we actually want to help them do 
an even better job at helping us all. So if you know someone or you find yourself in a situation where you might actually need gainful employment, honest work. General Colin Powell said, all honest work is honorable. So if you are an honest person, willing and able to work for an honest dollar, check them out. One of the jobs I had in the Army was KP duty. It's not glamorous or sexy, but it is valuable. The truck center. I don't want, want the glare. The truck center. Can you really put a good price tag on a good mechanic? Do you need help with your truck or your vehicle? Give them a call. Besides having seasoned veteran mechanics on duty, guess what they also have? Quality. A heart, a heart for this program and for you. So and quality used cars. Quality used cars. What I got right now, believe me, is is hanging on. But i i I haven't done my part to really maintain it, so <laughs> that probably did didn't help. If I were going to get a replacement, I'd be going there, and I might have to soon. The uh, Moore Auto Repair Place. You can recognize them by the POW MIA sign that they have out front. They're one of our sponsors because they're a veteran like me. Of course, I appreciate them profoundly. Stop by. Let them know that you appreciate their support of this program. If you represent a company that wants to sponsor this program the same way as these sponsors have, reach out to us and we'll be sure to mention to the public, hey, here's another one of our really great sponsors. Hometown Tire Repair. Hometown Tire Repair. You want to check it, boys? The, we are the Flanagan. That sounds Irish. Flanagan <laughs> sound Irish? You know, I, I was brought up and raised on the south side of Chicago. Irish culture is something that's very rich and powerful. And so my belief then has to be that a part of what motivates and drives these four men is their cultural heritage, to do a great job for you. Let them know that you appreciate them showing support for us. Walgreens. Walgreens is promoting $1 off cash reward during these senior days. You're over 55, you have a chance to save some money. You know, you, you, you're going to pay for prescriptions and medications anyway. Take advantage of something that could save you money. Go to Walgreens. <clears throat> I've read a great deal about the Southern Poverty, Southern Poverty Law Center. They are in the news every other week or at least once a month about something. It's a civic and civil rights organization that has a long history. A long history of fighting racism and discrimination. You have, they're, they're, they're one of our partners. You have the ability to get involved in their cause, their crusade, and it's only going to help all of us. We mention them because we want people to be able to see an opportunity to get involved in the community in various political causes that is directly related to all of us. That's only going to help us all. There are times when in the course of your routine daily life, you may see something in the news that really, really upsets you. And the question I hear all the time, I've asked this question of myself often, is, but what can you do about it? What can you do about the things that you see in the news that you don't like? There's a lot of things that you can do, actually. And getting involved with groups like this is a way in which you can actually contribute to some small change that pushes back against the things that you say that you don't like. So, we definitely 
want to lift up, support, encourage, and recognize the Southern Poverty Law Center. Fun in the community. You know, I, I remember having lived in a couple of remote areas thinking, man, ain't nothing going on in this neighborhood, you know. But I just stay in the house and watch TV. There's something going on in our neighborhood. It's a fun in the community, huge ingredient to our, it, which is a huge ingredient to our recipe for success. The Laporte, right now TV program, is celebrating its 12th anniversary, 12 years. This is my first time hosting the show, but it's been around for a while, and it's been around for 12 years. The anniversary celebration is something that we're planning that's going to incorporate and involve the community, and we want to have, especially, look forward to having kids enjoy the experience so that in the next dozen years, they'll be able to say they remember being a part of this history. History is not something that you just read about. It's something you live every day. The Comcast Channel, 9, Channel 99 10th anniversary celebration is coming up really, really soon. You should expect more details soon. Now that I've been successful <laughs> in addressing the announcements and paying homage to our sponsors, I this was all a setup so that I could start a very important conversation with Mr. The, the legendary, no, no, no. The, the highly distinguished, my really good friend, um, Michael Mack. You know, uh, I, I could finish this, the show just adding on accolades, but that would defeat the purpose. Um, I would really appreciate it if you're able to give us an update on the current political um, Election results. Okay. Well, yeah, Michael Mack, third ward councilman, 13 years steel worker at uh, Cleveland Cliffs. And uh, I'm, I'm proud and happy to be here on your introductory show, Thank the first you. show. You, you never forget that. I hope I'm doing good. I hope that I'm not. I hope that I'm doing good. Oh, no, you, just like everything else, uh, you set a bar for yourself and you get better. That's That's been my motto for all my life. You know, so whatever I did, I'm going to try to get better. So it really don't matter where you start. Where you keep going, but uh, the election results are over. Uh, I had a mayoral run, mm -hmm. uh, didn't do so well, and I just want to make mainly I want to co congratulate the uh, the winners of the two uh, that I was involved in. Uh, Angie Nelson Dyche yes. won the Democratic primary. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, she uh, basically she had more votes than all five of us other ones put together. <laughs> So, wow. I mean, you know, she ran called, an excellent. Is that called a landslide? Oh, yeah. No, she ran an excellent campaign. I mean, you know, when that, and that's what politics is all about nowadays. I mean, I, you know, I believe in this transition is coming and uh, is, things are going to change. But who knows how they're going to change. But, you know, she ran a far better campaign, much more organized. And, and uh, she's going to be an excellent mayor. She's going to be a so. great representative for the community. She's super smart. I had an opportunity to work with her on quite a few things. So, you know, we're, we're in good hands. Uh, with with that and uh, the young man uh, Joseph Nelson, he's going to be taking over my spot as the third ward council. Okay. Uh, he's been wanting to. I've, I've been knowing him for some years, uh, back from my retail days, and uh, he's a really uh, he's a businessman. He owns uh, Life's a Beach, I think is the name of the company, and uh, real smart, real passionate about the community, mm -hmm. and uh, I think he's going to do a great job. And anything I can do to help, I'll I'll be helping him out as a. Uh, as well, so a lot of other people won, but those are the two races that I, you know, from a Democratic perspective that I was, you know, running for and not running, you know, my replacement. So I'm just happy for both of those people and happy for all of the, the processes. I wish we had a better turnout countywide. We and wasn't had, it like 11 uh, percent or 60%? I think 10, 10 or 11. Ten, I saw wow, 10 yeah, and, pretty uh, low. To, to me, that is the 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 thing that is going to transition because I, I just read an article the other day. You know, the baby, baby boomers are real. It's real. I'm 60 years old. I was born in 62. Uh, 1963 uh, or 4 is the cutoff for baby boomers. Right. Um, there was such a large amount of baby boomers that it impacted housing, it impacted commercials, it impacted television, it impacted it's just a, a huge audience. Yes. And, you know, that transition is going to happen by 2028, I believe. Mm -hmm. 2028. They've been predicting it. Generation, well, it's, for a while. It's, you know, now it's here. 
Yeah, 2028 election, uh, there will be more participants that are from Generation Z and the millennials right. than baby yeah. boomers. Right. And that just changes everything because wow. now you, it's, it's not so senior focused. It's uh, youth and, you know, that's, then that's the transition. We need to be, be better at it. So uh, I'm hearing are, you say that if you're able to read the signs, you can see, you can make some fair and honest predictions about how these demographic shifts mm -hmm. are going to impact what our society and our country needs. Mm -hmm. And politicians are going to have to be able to have an answer. They're going to have to be able to respond to those needs. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason why I'm so very, very happy. And <laughs> Here we go again. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a <laughs> simp. You know, this is this this is too easy. Yeah, you know, I just found that definition out last week. I, I was like, what is that? And I went and looked it up. You know, I don't I don't need to do that. You know, I don't appreciate it if somebody just wants to get close to me and compliment me for no reason. No, it's it's for a reason. If you complimented me, there's a lot to worth complimenting, mm -hmm. and that's my. Point. Yes. You're able to break it down so that the average person, our neighbors, everybody in our community is able to see the significance of what's happening right now. And you hear it all the time. We need to push back against that, that it's, it's not real. It's not important. It is real. It is important. It involves you. If you choose not to see it, then you know what? You haven't taken the time to really think very hard about it. Let's connect the dots. And then guess what happens? Those things that you say that you don't like or that you, that you know there's room for improvement, mm -hmm. they start to change as you get involved. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So yeah, that involvement is really important. Uh, you know, now that I'm uh, not going to be the uh, third ward uh, councilman for uh, coming up, you know, obviously the, in the next, ele next election next year. Um, I've already started the ball rolling on what I'm going to do because I'm going to stay as a steel worker. I'm not. I'm going to retire from the steel mills uh, at, a, at a later date, but I'll get back into the youth because for six years, uh, I've got an autistic son. I was a track coach with the senior, not the senior, but it's, it's a version of Special Olympics. It's called the Unified Track, and I still don't know if we've got that back from COVID yet. But, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to working with youth and doing the Man. things that I did before, you know, just trying to, in part, a good example. Every time so, I talk to you, I see about. something else new, <laughs> something else more to like. You know. Oh yeah, no, I, I love that uh, working with those kids. If you've ever, if you want to be motivated on anything, go to a Special Olympics or Unified Track track meet and watch some of these kids compete. And my goal was just to uh, to make them feel like athletes. And when I, and my definition of athlete is a adult coach with high expectations, male or female, that are not gonna let you slide and gonna notice where you're at and force you to get better, you know, push you. And I, I just, I tried to bring that to them. It ain't okay. irrelevant of how fast you run, is that all you got? And, uh, that, that, and make it fun. Yeah. So that's the type of uh, adult child interaction, adult young man interaction, young woman, that I think develops people's and develops character. character. Yes, but you have to have that. You have to push and motivate people to get involved. Just oh, pick your one spot, and and focus on that. And you know, if everybody did that, thing you, you you you've reminded me just by making this point of another really good friend that I have, Mr. Lakin, Mr. L Lark. 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 Old school. I remember oh, back in the day. <laughs> the, I anticipate the entire conversation Big I fan. have with Mr. Lark <laughs> is going to relate I'm to Joyce's. Just that point. Yes, the mm -hmm. point that you just made dovetails perfectly with our second guess. Mm -hmm. mm. The oh, the oh, did yeah, you, I don't know the show. Uh, right wait, just you wait, just you wait. Stand by. Yeah, you know the best is literally yet to come. I wanted to ask you, what is it that you are looking forward to now in this new role? Mm -hmm. you, you're moving on yes, yep. to something more. Mm -hmm. What is that? Uh, well, focusing on the things I'm passionate about, which is kind of developing. Another, another thing I'm just passionate about and I'm learning about is this artificial intelligence. Oh, and man. So I'm going to pass that along to, uh, not pass along, sure. but uh, try to share what I learned with, with others. I use the... Uh, what is it, the virtual reality headsets? Yes. I've been yes. conversating with the chat GPT and now it's on uh, Bing and MSN. Mm -hmm. uh, not MSN, but uh, Microsoft, uh, they use it. So um, we just have a lot of tools that are gonna transform 
pretty much everything to tell the truth. Uh, there, so many businesses and jobs are going to be displaced um, with this artificial intelligence. Uh, I mean, you know, just the fact that, you know, uh, the programming side of a show like this uh, with artificial intelligence, it allows one person to do the job of 10. Yeah. Writing, uh, how do you do copyright? Uh, and But, the, you know, those are the legal questions for the big boys. But from my perspective, the sooner that we get our young people and our culture, and especially our African-American culture, to understand and use these tools, uh, who knows the creativity that's going to come out. You know, the way that I can use them, the questions I can ask are limited from from me, but these uh, youngsters, if they start using them, it's going to just change markets and change a lot. So mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be very interesting. And so I'm, I'm passionate about that. Um, everything to do with youth. And, uh, you know, that, that's where I plan on putting my energy in. And obviously going to work every day at the steel mill. I'm going to stick with that. I, um, I've had a chance to see some headlines. I've seen some stories that are trying to inform and educate us about this new technological horizon mm -hmm. that we are approaching. I remember when artificial intelligence was entirely academic. The only people that ever spent any time talking about natural language, fuzzy logic, neural networks, pattern recognition, visual pattern recognition, all of that stuff was the stuff of scientific laboratory experimentation. Now, guess what? Evidently, it has evolved and started to mature and show up in technological products mm -hmm. that are now being, what, used by public safety, public um, policy leaders. It's not entirely academic. But, but it's moving out of the academic realm. It's becoming something that more people have access to and oftentimes will use even if they don't even know that they're using it because oftentimes it's in the, in the background. The uh, problem that I see it is something that has been mentioned in the past but it always seems so abstract or obscure and that is the bias. The bias is the fault and the flaw with artificial intelligence. You can't separate a message from the messenger. You have the ability to create this tool, but guess what? Integrated in it in ways that even you can't even see is your bias. You, we recognize how in our culture, in our businesses, in our society, we have severe systemic problems like racism and sexism. The companies that are producing these artificial intelligence products are part of what it is they are making available that is make life easier has integrated in it aspects of that bias. And you only find out about it sometime much later, so much longer. You end up finding out that by investing in this technology, you have helped an institution that is repressing us in other ways. The only problem that I have with the new trend we see with artificial intelligence is we're able to see all the benefits, we do not see all the costs, and we don't recognize immediately the potential threat it represents. By buying into it, we're also contributing to the source of it. Mm. Yeah, does, I, that, does that make sense? It makes sense. You know, how many times yeah. have you heard people say, I hate Microsoft? Microsoft can kick my ass. Why, why, why do people take on that attitude? Because they see something that produces something that we all value, okay? But it's also something that does not respond directly to other needs. Yes, I, mean, I, I, I agree. I get it. But in, you know, going forward with anything, though, that technology is here. Um, it is here, it that. exists. There's nothing that could be changed about it. Either it's going to be molded, pushed, and uh, you know developed further mm -hmm. with our best and brightest, mm -hmm. or by our worst and greedy. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that, that's to okay. me that's, that's okay. the option. There is no other option. You it's let not me going know back, you heard me. Thank we're you. Not, we're not going back to the buggy days. We're, we're not, not going back. No. It is there. 
Yeah. And if we them. pull out, if America pulls out, if our culture pulls out, if our youth pull out, somebody is there. Yes. You know, somebody's there. Nature so hates it's, every, it, it's, a, it's a competition of, of, of doing better, being better, and uh, not, you know, looking backwards and talking about, you know, I always use 1975 or 6 because that's just... You know, I don't know why I pulled that number out. I was around then, so but uh, that's we're not going back to 1976. Some of those rules were good, you know. And Michigan City, especially, is not going back. We've got the double track coming. We've got so much uh, to look forward. To. So much to look forward to, and and it's exactly like I said before. Either, you know, what's coming is coming based on what we've already done and, and develops there. How do we incorporate more of us? Involvement. How do we mm -hmm. carve out a piece uh, of the profits of the the largest that's coming to to fix some of the wrongs and to develop you know areas of the community that need help? How, you know, mm -hmm. how do you take a little bit from there and do that? And that's the, the stuff that we need to work on as a community. So I, I'm not going to quit working on that stuff. You know, that's just how I'm built. I wouldn't expect anything yeah. else. <laughs> <laughs> just, uh, what did you do in the audience? Uh oh, yes, yes sir. From the we have a question. Uh, well, first, uh, first and foremost, we want to thank, we want to commend our our, our distinguished council member. Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. 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 Michael Max, for his distinguished service thank you, at, at City Hall here in Michigan City and to our community. Everything you've done up uh, until now, and you. including. Thank you. And, and sir, we under so in view of the 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 the. the the change in the political arena. Uh, when does the transition take place, sir? At what juncture or point does that occur? Uh, I believe, I, don't hold me to it, but I think it's the, the January 4th, I believe, is when the SWAT signing in. I believe that's when we got signed in, trying to remember. But the first such and such day in January, they put their hands on their hearts and they take an oath, and boom, it happens. It's in January. Yeah, mm -hmm. early January, the first Monday, first Tuesday, week. something like first week. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we would hope that he that he that he stayed. I mean, the the the, the, the contributions you made to our, to our community and to our youth is is enormous, uh, and we would hope that that, that Mr. Lark over at Choices, Lark and Choices, to, to company would would, would 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 embrace our our councilman. Uh, because he has a wealth of, of knowledge and resources that, uh, to share for the benefit of our youth. Mm -hmm. yes. And again, well, I want to thank you for your service, sir. And that's beautiful, Mr. Lark. Like I said, I remember the, I, it's a large family name. Uh, he's a bit older than me, but I, I, I know the Lark family uh, from back years ago. So, uh, and, and all of us working towards, you know, just passing on the best that we have had out of our youth and mm -hmm. trying to pass that on. That's what it's all about, passing it on, you know. And, you know, I, did, I, I was an athlete back in the day, and I guess that's where I get some of that stuff, you know, getting bullied by the, old, the older guys like that back then, but just passionately wanting to get in there with them. So, you know, you get better, and uh, that's what it's all about, being better, passing along, you know, and having a little discipline and uh, giving that, passing that along to the youth. I almost forgot something, a very, very important um the program is absolutely apolitical. I've actually personally had a chance to speak with Mir, and I asked him to come on the show. And I haven't really heard back from him, but just so that it's clear, the point of this entire program is to try to showcase, to educate, and educate the community yes, about people in the community. Yes. Their self knowledge is some of the most important and valuable, most powerful kinds of knowledge. So if you are a politician and you want to sit in this chair, I want you to sit in this chair. Yeah. I want you to have an opportunity to express your views, your values, so that the rest of the community can know who you are. Amen. 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 Uh, and if you would, uh, uh, with, with, uh, with our councilman, uh, Mr. Mack, uh, he was with a final thought on, on, yes. on generating a vote and and moving forward uh, uh, to our community, sir. Uh, just get out there. Those that are, those that can do, uh, get out there and try to uh, encourage others to vote and participate. Yes. Because without participation, your voice is not heard, and uh, the most money wins. And uh, mm. that dynamic is going to happen. It's going to transition, 
with or without us. So let's try to make us part of that transition so it's shaped in a manner that, you know, is beneficial to more people. Amen. Thank you. And now, oh, and my now, next Sergeant, guest would you, will come up you with after us? this break. Mr. Sergeant, would you leave us a, uh, with a, a brief uh, invocation, sir? Dear God in heaven, we have succeeded in the mission of coming together and fellowshipping with you, the rest of the community, and each other. And for this, we will be eternally grateful. Dear God in heaven, we know that through you all things are possible. And we also know that it's because of you, because of the example that you set for us through Jesus Christ that we have the ability to create even greater miracles. Dear God in heaven, we ask that you stand by us, continue to walk with us as we leave this moment and move on to the next moment, which will only be to continue the glorification of you here on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 And now we we'll pause the station identification. We're pausing for a station identification. Afterwards, we'll be right After. back with our special guest. Afterwards, we'll be right back with our next very special guest, Mr. Mr. Michael. Michael, Michael Lark. 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 Yes, from, from Choices. From Choices. From handcuffed to cuff. I can't wait to tell you about this. This yeah. is going to be awesome. <laughs> okay. Good evening and welcome to the broadcast. Uh, uh, this second half of our community education segment is underwritten in part by, our, by the Flanagan, Flanagan Tires, your local next in uh, uh, hometown tire dealers, uh, located in beautiful downtown Michigan City, Indiana. We also would like to acknowledge our good friends over at, at Chipotle, Chipotle Mexican food. Uh, for uh, the next time you want to go out and have a great deal, a great meal, Invite the family out to Chipotle. Uh, we also would like to acknowledge our good friends over at the Wall Gang. Uh, to our to our fallen uh, our fallen comrades, gone but ne never forgotten. Uh, we'd like to uh, thank Commander Steve Moore. Uh, also, uh, 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 the uh, Moore Auto Repair, Moore Auto Repair on the west side of Michigan City. We also would like to acknowledge our good friends. Over at the Truck Center, the Truck Center for Quality Used Automobiles. If you've got problems with credit or financing, contact them. Ask for Mr. Clarence Davis over at the Truck Center, and they'll connect the dots. And today, at this moment, we are honored to have two distinguished pillars of our community, the, our, 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 our City Council uh, men and, uh, and, and mayoral candidate, Mr. Michael Mack from the Third War, and also a, a, a distinguished uh, 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 a, a, a distinguished pillar uh, involved with our youth and, and, um, and also the founder of Choices, Choices from Handcuffs to Cufflinks, the um, Mr. Mr. Michael Lark. Gentlemen, welcome to the broadcast. All right, well, welcome. It's an honor to have you guys. It's an honor to be here. An honor to be here. Uh, if we could start from, from uh, uh, with Mr. Lark over at Choices. Sir, sure, tell us about Choices. Choices is a program that started when the corona first hit it. We, we're going on our third year. It's where I get a group of youth. They're taking the community to um, do outstanding yard work, uh, organizing homes for elderly peoples and widows and people who can't afford to get their uh, yard work done. We do it as we would accept donations. And that keeps the teens more active in being entrepreneurs and to put money involved and to save and have bank accounts. And it also allows you all to continue the service uh, to benefit the community. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and uh, if, 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 well, now, if you would explain, so how did that, what, how did, how did choices come about? Choices came about, um, you know, we couldn't go nowhere when the pandemic hit. And I'm on my fourth marriage and got teen boys, four of them, and they was like gaining weight. And, and <laughs> that, the eating and, and, and laying in the house and playing the game wasn't setting right with me. So I decided to uh, take the boys out during the winter 
to shovel snow and next thing I know it just started growing and thanks to Pastor Hurt and our church new covering decided to help me along with the program. So I decided to call it choices because no matter how old we are, how young we are, we still have to make those decisions. But I figure by us being older adults that we can help more of the youth by letting them know the things that we go through and the financial status that we be in a lot as uh, <laughs> parents. And, and uh, they just start growing and, and parents start calling me, Mr. Lark, uh, could you come get my son? Could you come get my daughter? And, and we would take them out and we got them their own personal cars where we add money onto their accounts. Amen. And, 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 it, and it had been a blessing doing it because I'm telling you if um, God not involved with anything, it's, it's not going to see fit right. So we keep them spiritually strong also and we definitely be the example for the youth because, you know, it's what we got to do mm -hmm. as adults. Amen. And, and that's one of the problems that we're having right now in this generation is we need more leadership, not only from the old school, but for the new schools as well, and, and, and working with the kids, because if not, we're gonna spend a lot of time going back and forth to the county jail, to the juvie hall. So even not only with the Choices program, we, we also, I go around during the day, Monday through Friday, for charter kids, parents who don't have cars. I take them to school at 11 o'clock, and pick them up at two every day, Monday through Friday, to make sure they get there because if not, they had to deal with the system inside their home. So that's, we do a lot of things in the community. But it's a lot more need to be done if we can all fellowship as team players and start focusing on, uh, focusing on the kids because they really need us. They acting bold and bad, but they need us. Amen. So, you know, and then one of the other ideas we came with choices, we want to open up a co-ed boxing ring for girls and boys as well. Yes. And, um, would you expound on that, if you would, sir? We understand choices. Real men use fists. Real men use fists because there's too much violence going on in all states, these guns and all of that. And from my generation, I'll be 67 May 10th, so we always use our fists. Well, People that's, had guns, but we used our fists. Yeah, that's true. That's because true. the reason we used our fists is because the next day we'd be back at the same table eating with each other. Amen. But if Amen. you got a gun, it's nothing promised if you'd be there the next day. So That's true. And, I, and, and being a retired boxer, I, I find that that would be one of the keys to uh, keep some of the kids occupied, girls and boys, because it's the Internet, um, the Wi-Fi, the, the YouTube, the Facebook. Um, if we could get out and give them a difference and help them with jobs, ability, and also with the education, because Michigan City has always been an educated place. Yes. And just lately, it has kind of like slacked a little bit, and that's where I know it's hard for parents because everybody got to work. It's, it's a struggle. But if we keep saying it's a struggle, that's what we're going to have to deal with, so we need to focus more on some being successful than a struggle. So Amen. You know we're struggling. Amen. And I don't want mm. the kids to struggle like we're struggling because we are the parents, the adults. So we need to make an a, a open way, just like they're making that two-lane trackway. We need to make right. a two-lane trackway for the kids and the adults and the elderly as well. Hey, to we connect need, them. Yeah, we need that bad. Yes, sir. I don't care how they build homes, apartments, tracks, or whatever. My thing is building up youth and taking care of the elderly. That's Amen. my goal. Amen. And I thank God for that gift. Amen. Councilman, yeah, Councilman, and yeah. Councilman Mack, the, the choices from handcuffs to cufflinks being a product of your of your third war. Yeah. Do you view them as a as an asset or a liability? Well, what he said, you know, the way it started, you know, the, it just brings the old yes, saying to me is, uh, you know, necessity is the mother of invention. Yes. Yeah. Most yes, things that are great were born like somebody did it because I needed to do it. And yes, then you find that you're not so special. Other people had that need too. Correct. And that's why you get all yes, the phone sir. calls. So it's just so beautiful to hear that story the way that you uh, started it. And another thing you said that uh, just, you know, you got to be a certain age to remember, but this was the educational hub of LaPorte County. We used to, if you wanted to learn how to build cars, we had a state-of-the-art facility. Yes. Well, if you wanted to uh, learn how to box and stuff, the Emmett Wise Center and stuff yeah. like that. I mean, mm -hmm. and, and we could actually, to me, it's like you can walk and chew gum at the same time. That's yes, right. It yeah, can yes. be a yeah. beach community, but mm -hmm. we can be the center of education, learning, culture. training, and development. Yes. And culture. We can be that. Now, we, yeah. we have lost a lot of that. Now, 
I think it's bigger than us in particular, mm -hmm. but the opportunity to bring that back. I, I think our whole mi greater Michigan City area is looking for, you know, if you got that many kids in, a, in an urban city environment, what do you have in a rural environment? Yeah, like, true. Right. We're just 15 right. miles circle of Radius. where we are. Um, there's just so many kids, and it's an opportunity. It's an opportunity. It's, it goes just like what he said. When we get more uh, people of, of different ages uh, desiring to uh, help develop and push forward, uh, we can we, maximize it. We got the beach. We, yes. we always had the beach. Yes. Lake Michigan is our beach. We, I was here when it was an amusement park. Yes. And I was <laughs> here when, because I was part of the eruption when things went bad back in the 60s. Mm. I was one of those kids. I was one of those kids who constantly stayed in trouble. But it was always something to do, but I was always being ignorant. So I was doing stuff that I shouldn't have been doing. Even though they had the big spotlight here, it was just being illiterate to it. So if we have some adults or people who could be team leaders study being a label person, we could get a lot done here. Well, a question to our councilman. Uh, Councilman Mack, do, do the city have, um, when we were kids, when I, again, referring to, reflecting upon me as a product from the, of the big city, they had what the, the CYO and the NY, the neighborhood youth programs, do Michigan City have such a thing, such an entity for our youth? No, we as far as summer we, employment we, initiatives, we we've got to have a vision to go back to believing in talent and ability. I I think personally, uh, our park department is capable and ne needed to develop all of these branches to to give resources and not, I mean that's our tax dollars. Yes, uh, and to yes. not have a recreation director and a robust, strong, visionary. Park Department that actually is is out there trying to do exactly what he said. Yes. You know, you connecting the dots. Yeah, you're right. not uh, bringing the community together. You're not doing a disservice, but you're definitely not maximizing your talents, maximizing the potential, and and meeting the need that people have. But that transition is coming. If it doesn't go Amen. through the government, it will come through the private sector. It's just a matter mm -hmm. of it could take longer or it could be done better. But uh, you know, a, a C minus or a C plus. You know, it's still moving forward. You're still learning how to do it. Because so. even with me growing up in Michigan City, mm -hmm. I'm from Gary, but we had summer jobs. Come yes. on, they ain't got no summer jobs, man. I'm saying. So I mean, I'm trying to like put in some they jobs. You saying they had it in Gary? I'm from Gary. And, and they had, had summer jobs. We had it here. We had it here too. Yeah, well, yeah. What happened, sir? The Park and Recreation was the one who was mainly in charge because I oh, worked for the street department. Okay. Everybody had a we was called it was called CEDA program. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It was CEDA program. Becky Williams also ran part of the CEDA mm -hmm. program. She taught we taught people how to uh, fill out resumes. They was getting paid to go to classes. They were doing all our job, just like Choice is doing. That's why Choices is so familiar to me in doing it, because that's what I did as a kid that kept me in safe haven. Yeah. To help my mom pay bills because I had a single parent. So you you try to, you know, it ain't you get a lump Bring sum of money. To the table. You don't get a lump sum of money, then go try to rear up and try to flip and flop it. You go like mama say, help me with this water bill, help Amen. me with this rent. Amen. We gotta put that back in in, in, in prospect because mm -hmm. this Man, I don't care how much money you got. This is a struggle still. Yes. <laughs> so my thing is, while we still out here struggling, I don't want them babies to struggle because we deal a lot, too, with mental illness, which mm -hmm. is one of the big things that we're dealing with right now with addiction. Yes, and addiction. Yes, yes, yes. I'm not going to knock you on your addiction. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to knock you on your mental thought, but I will try to send you to some people, mm -hmm. some resource that can help you. I'm not going to leave you out here. I don't complain too much about the homeless people because... When Michigan City invited that boat, they knew that they had to deal with that because that is a big addiction where people are taking their final money, paying on them slot machines, whatever they do. I don't gamble, so mm -hmm. that's never been one of my issues. But I know that's a setback. Gotcha. So I I can't knock people's or the commercial art what they doing in their business, but it's a lot of setback here that shouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. Because Michigan City is a great place to live mm -hmm. and a great place to raise children. Amen. I'm one of them. I was just ignorant, like I said. But if you make a choice in decision, well, yeah, I wouldn't say necessarily say ignorant. I just oh, say we just made bad choices. Yeah, that's why it's called choices. <laughs> there you go. So, but I did. I made a lot of bad choices. But you know, 
even being incarcerated, by, by being incarcerated, I ain't let my time do me. I done it. Amen. I took a brick mason welding, wow. home improvement. I was a youth counselor in the joint. Oh, I got four thanks. GEDs. I went to PNC. <laughs> I studied criminal justice, business administration, and social work. <laughs> I ain't no label person. My thing that God gave me is to help people, and that's what I do. Oh, right. And I love it. I love it. And, and um, like I said, one for my cousin, Pastor Hurt. Uh, he's been keeping me planted. I understand Pastor Hurt has been it's very and you know, in, in, in the choices program with with, 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 yes. with supporting financially, yes, and, you know, does. as well as providing yeah. spiritual uh, 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 initiatives and inspiration to our youth. Where is the where is Pastor Hurt's ministry or church? Um, Grant, and that's in the that's in your ward, isn't it? Mm-hmm. West Side, the, mm-hmm. in the West Side. Yes, mm-hmm. and what's the name mm-hmm. of the? Mm-hmm. Yeah, prison. West you didn't there. know that. My neighborhood <laughs> where uh, I'm you know, Dr. Brian like in Eastport. Yeah, no, 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 that Brian, that, no. That's the first ward. The first ward and the third ward are close. The the top, like near the beach, is first ward. But the west of all of that, you know. Yeah, because I stayed on Junway Drive. I lived out there for seven mm-hmm. years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. so but, uh, the lines are going there, but the entire west. Even side. though me with, with me trying to do things and knowing the different areas of this ward, that ward, I'm kind of not. I'm kind of lost on that issue because well they do have now, a city but now right, that's right. it right here. Yeah. So they can be. That's yeah. why I'm saying if uh, things will open up and fellowship begins. Yes. Because he know things. Yes, he We do. need to know the things he know, <laughs> so we can do the right things that he was doing. <laughs> so that's what I believe in. I believe in him and what he was doing. But yeah, yeah, we we do this, we I'm do that, but he ain't no label. Host. I can tell he ain't no uh, label sergeant, person. Yeah, sergeant, you get out there and do the change from you know what you got to do. So I work, I right, it. You know, work in the steel mill. So I, I, know, know, I, I know you do. I, uh, I, I don't even want to interrupt, interrupt this conversation. Come on, Sarge. Come on, Sarge. Come on, Sarge. Help me. Help me. Yes, sir. Um. I'm back on the show. Enjoy Thank you so very, very much. I've been looking forward to this. I've been very much looking forward to keeping a promise that uh, we made in an earlier conversation. Yes, sir. The rest of the community, this community that you've been operating in, it needs to recognize your face. It needs to be able to say, I know who he, I know him. Yeah, they okay. know me. <laughs> and guess what? As soon as more people in this community get to see your face and get to see what's possible and that's not common knowledge the system wanted to destroy you you were locked up you were not supposed to be able to do anything like what you are doing right now amen but then that's a testimony i know it's a testimony because everything i've done i was at the age of 10 and a half you know what wow i was locked up at 10 and a half in spite, I was released at 18. In yeah, spite yeah, of all of that, in spite of everything that was stacked sorry. against you, Come yes, on, what, pushed. yes, I did. If it was possible with you, it's possible with anybody. Yes, this Amen. Handcuffs to couplings idea. <laughs> it's a reminder of the fact that more important than what other people may think about you what matters yes, more is what you think of yourself. Yes, and sir. so, you know, this program, this choices program is helping people see you have the ability to make some choices about who you want to be. Yes, sir. That's what it means to build character. I wanted to be able to say that, but I wanted the rest of the community to be able to see who I'm saying that about. I wanted your face to be out there. You know, another thing, uh, just hearing you talk about doing stuff, I... Uh, Kenny Fly and Fly High Youth, you know, I've been, I helped him initiate that in the beginning. And, uh, you know, I, I told him what happens. I, I used to manage Best Buy stores and I was a regional manager. So I had hundreds of employees all yeah. over the nation, used to go around to them. And as you get up in responsibility and your organization grows, your um, responsibilities change. Yes, and it does. that's <laughs> where the connections and the other things that happen because you know if you if you're used to talking to the kids and being part of that and being involved it's only so much you can do because when you got 10 kids now you can be effective when you have 50 kids Mm. you are totally ineffective and if you (laughs) are in charge Mm -hmm. the ability to recreate yourself to do that is a whole nother game yes yes when when these when our market 
is in such need of these programs, the guy who sticks the neck out and tries to start it gets inundated, and mm. the growth is the difficulty, handling the growth, because Correct. there's such a need. So, um, you know, I, I've worked with a lot of people on different things like that, and the moment that the people that are in charge of the programs come up with better ideas to manage the growth, yes. uh, that's where we, you, you, we uh, maximize what we're doing. For yeah, yeah, yeah. But it starts with like, like, the, like, like what he's doing. Yeah, but that's, the, the, that's the flip card. That's the, that's the flip side of the yes, card. I'm doing more. Going. So I figure, yeah. I figure so much violent going on. Cause I'm using porn. I don't even like look at news no more. But yes. I just had to go back old school for a minute. I had to start thinking what made me keep my mm -hmm. angle going. What can I do for this generation with the kids? Cause they hard here. Mm. So I say, wow, see, why not? It, it, it calmed me down. It made me more of a a young man, mm -hmm. it made me responsible. I couldn't drink, I couldn't get high. Cause there's a lot of responsibilities come with that when you travel and you fight. So I figured why not get a group of kids and start from that point, mm -hmm. but wear gloves. Cause real men use fists. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In the military we have an expression, um, if self discipline doesn't work, discipline will. Yes. If yeah. you yeah. have the ability to remain self-disciplined, to learn the skills to become a good boxer, it's going to necessarily incorporate other skills. Yes, it will. And that's what builds character. What? My goodness. I, I had so many thoughts while you were talking, I have lost track of them all. Well, while you're thinking about that, I would like to ask the councilman, I mean, councilman, uh, uh, Matt, a question about the community centers and resources what is going on? Uh, we've, I, we have the, 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 the program that, uh, that Be Becky started on, in, your, in your community, in your ward, and then there was a, there was a, a King Center. What's, the, what's going on up with this, uh, sir? Yeah, why is it just sitting What's there? happening here well, in Michigan City? The King Center, why is it just, and then it's down in the woods, but right. I just always wonder why and it just all sits And any of those other than every wise facility, Cause I work. I've been with. I've been. I'm. My, I'm right down here. I'm on the state board mm -hmm. for Laporte County, South County, and Pulaski County. I'm treasurer. Right. Okay. Yeah. So but when I see, uh, you know, buildings are one thing. Mm -hmm. The in infrastructure of leadership to operate something is another thing. Yeah, and uh, the people that I've talked to, um, it's just talent. The recognition of talent, talent, mm -hmm. and the attempt to develop talent, and when you're talking about operating a large yes. facility, oh, no, facility right. yes. you need a lot of people that are talented and experienced. Right. And to me, that it has to be done by acknowledging that that's what we have to do. We 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 have to uh, become that educational place, that developmental place, because. Mm -hmm. You know, you can build the building is in itself. Building a building, anybody can do that. And there's existing. And buildings. the funds are though. Yes, right. The, the, the here. trick is to, to create the right. people machines yes. where people work together to accomplish a particular task. And it's coming. It's going to happen. You're seeing that in the communities all next to us. And that, like I said, my campaign was totally based on building that facility. I truly believe that one of those facilities where you have eight or ten basketball courts where you have an AAU games, you've got the all of the wrestlers able to come in and practice off season. You've got all of the baseball players able to come in from off season. You've got 15, 20 miles so of people that not that. sitting still because it's yes. constantly rotating. You've got all that yes. and you've got the you've got adults in each one of these endeavors yes. with We're their with their group of kids. Yes. Now that's where you, you maximize. It's not just one place. You've got a place for each one can go and and then how many people would love to come to Michigan City and watch their kid play a basketball game AAU or homes when I, and when I went to Hammond they have like the homeschool championship so oh, wow. all wow. the kids that are in homeschools that don't have facilities they go there they they pay and wow. they go there and then they have compete against each other they've got the charter school championships yeah. You know, they've got all kind of places. When you when you desire to do that, it can come. So I, I hope we can get to that. I, that was my whole campaign. And, you know, if we don't go full bore like these other communities uh, do, at least, you know, we can support what you're doing until we right. can get there. But I, I personally believe that, you know, our community could support 
a facility we, as big as anybody can dream. We got Elston, but yes, that uh, could be reimagined. Huge. They done moved the Girls and Boys Club to where Brown Mackey mm -hmm. is, but I, you know, I ran the Girls and Boys Club in Milwaukee. I worked with Ray Allen for a lot of years, mm. so um, the Girls and Boys Club here is a little bit different to me because I'm gonna just bring it to the table. It just seemed like a big old daycare to me. Well, they're building a new facility, though. It's not there with Brown Mackey yet, but what? Huh? What about? Yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. it was the old YMCA. Yeah. No, 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 Brown no, Mackey. Oh, oh, what? Oh, what? Oh, 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 Going yeah, through the high school. Bad Bowman now. It used to be a court. They used okay. to do temporary right. So, mm. my thing is, even with, you know, Michigan City have a school of art. Everything hooked on oh. in Elston. It's a big auditorium just sitting there. <laughs> we, can, we can't have no drum line, no, no steppers, no dancers, no theater in our community. I'm telling you, if we could do things like that, it would take a lot of pressure mm. in society off, off the law. Right. Except them kids find themselves acting, they like dancing and doing stuff. We got to start hearing those kids' voices. So I asked Brother Smith, I have six kids that I work with daily on basis. I watch them grow. They're on probation, they're coming off probation, they're working, they got jobs, they're going to charter school. Is it a way that I could bring them where they can, we can hear their voices? And it's all different races. Black, white, Hispanic. Many the kids I work with, I don't, I don't. We don't see color that way. We don't discriminate. So with my program, I'm trying to get these. I kids. think that's a great idea. Uh, I want the kids. Have, have I want the kids. To, to I want the kids to know they feel responsible. Once them right kids right start feeling right responsible, they they once them kids feel responsible, they're gonna question. make it. Yes, they're gonna make. I, I was one of them, and it took responsibility yes. to make me out the man I am today. Amen. Not prison, not that. None of that. It took me and God, not the pie in the sky. There's no great. I would be remiss if I missed the opportunity to point out or help the community see how, because what you're doing is so vital, essential, important, valuable, it is worth the effort to Just preserve it. it. We need to be able to look now out of what it is you started. A lot's possible. We can spend hours coming up with extension, auxiliary, ancillary, additional ideas built on top of that idea. But the original idea, is it possible for it to survive? The, the, the reward for a job well done is what? More work. I didn't come up with that expression. Keep it. Okay? Keep it. Do you want to look forward to more work just on you for the rest of your life and then after you can't do it anymore it all goes away we need to make sure that the rest of the community knows about this program but it gets involved so that it can survive amen that's on that note this program that this this program that this conversation is to be continued yes would you leave would you give us salutation out to our guests as we close uh as god we in heaven up? no well announce our guests as we go before we go off the end this has been a genuine pleasure and honor to speak with you, Mr. Larkin. Yes, sir. I got yes, it right. The CEO, <laughs> Larkin. the founder, <laughs> the founder, organizer, and miracle worker with Cuplinks Choices, Choices Program, handcuffs, handcuffs to Cuplinks. Cuplinks, a unique program to Michigan City, and to our distinguished, our distinguished. My friend, my who needs no introduction, is my. <laughs> a staple and a monument in, right. Michigan, Everybody um, in, <laughs> in the city of Michigan City. That's yes, not an exaggeration. No, you can own that. That is yeah. you. He is the next level, man. man still, well, still well, doing this thing. Still it working. It's a man. privilege and an honor to be able to yeah. say that I know you because I know what you've been able to do and what you're trying to do. Um, thank you, thank you so much yes. to the Duyas. <laughs> Both yes. Yes. I really do hope that I was able to help you both. Thank you. And I hope that this program well, we're going on the journey. Yeah. All right. Finally, I would like to add. I just want to thank all of our distinguished guest members yeah. that, on the panel, uh, from our co-host, Mr. Uh, Sergeant Anthony Edward Lewis. That's the name, Sergeant That's Lewis. Awesome. What is, if you want to describe this, you got like a top. Sergeant Sergeant Lewis. Please, describe to us, what is this, this metal in your shoulder? I, uh, 
If you at my job, at my before job, we go off here, I had a um, a patron point out. Yeah, I, I know what that is. I know what that is. I, I got mine in Vietnam though. This is what's called the CIB. Many, many men have died in order to receive this badge of valor. There's a distinction between different awards that you get in the military. This one is very, very distinctive. It indicates that I have been shot at and shot back in combat. Mm -hmm. hey. okay. Now, if you're from Michigan City or, or Gary, Chicago, you understand what it means to be in a gunfight. But it's different when you're in uniform overseas, getting shot at and shooting back against a declared enemy of our country. That's the difference between me and some gang members that's been out here on the street fighting in combat. And on that note, we want to thank you for your service, sir. We want to thank uh, uh, our distinguished council member, uh, 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 Councilman Michael Mack. We'd like to thank our, our, our the, um, uh, the, the, the founder and CEO of Choices, from handcuffs to cufflinks. Right. Thank you all for your service. We thank you all for your special guest appearance. And we hope to continue this conversation. Yes. In Please future. come back. Thank you. We also like to thank our good friends over at Alco Television. Alco Television Studios, rock. Thank you. <laughs>